the mysterious river Ward, over bridges, over stones, through once primeval landscape flows, ever changing, ever the same, whispering ancient memories as she flows. Welcome to this second Community Heritage Broadcast on Soares and its rich history. I'll be looking for your help later in solving some of the mysteries we discuss here, so do get in touch with your ideas to the contact shown. Ireland's earliest map, that of Ptolemy in 100 AD, gives pride of place to the rivers of the country. Boyne and Liffey are shown as thin black lines entering the Irish Sea, above and below the present-day area of Fingal. History happens along rivers, because that's where people congregate, and there is plenty of history to discover along the many rivers of Fingal. Ptolemy's knowledge of the country was restricted to that portion of our coast seen by travellers, but had he known more, he would surely have also depicted the many other streams which water this most fertile past of, of Leinster. The Delvin River, the Bracken River Balbriggan, the Daw Stream Rollstown, the Bride Stream Rush, and last but by no means least, our sister Meath rivers, the Broad Meadow and the Ward. All our streams rushing pell-mell down from the Meath highlands of Ashburn and Rathoth, and like all flowing water, sea-seeking. The Ward River was first formed when glacial meltwater dug deep into the limestone boulder of the Ward Valley eons ago. It saw an early man take his first tentative steps through the Ward Valley, then thickly forested and dangerous. It witnessed too the rise and fall of the countless fractious small Celtic kingdoms, locked forever in their unending bitter tribal feuds. The name Ward River comes from the Anglo-Norman word meaning to guard or to be a boundary, Awen Warda in Irish. It's also been called the Pell River and the Swords River. 18 kilometres long, it has a water catchment area of 60 square kilometres. The pr- parent river drawing in many watery offspring in its headlong rush to the sea. It rises in Kilbride, just south of Ferry Course Racecourse, and flows through the War Valley Heritage Park and then on to Brackenstown. Entering Swords, the Ward River takes its famous veer north through the village, exits over Scotstown Bridge and reaches Balheary and Lisson Hall. Here it joins with the Broad Meadow and together the two sister rivers join streams as they enter the Malahide Estuary, their warm fresh water finally mingling with the salty blue of the Irish Sea. Once... Shoals of salmon came up river this way, and so too did pillaging raiders from the north, ravaging Columba's famed monastery for plunder and slaves. So close were swords to the coast then that the monks had barely time to ring their toxin handbell in the tower before hell was unleashed upon them. Throughout its length, the river passes through the old lordship of Mead, granted to that great builder of motts and castles, Hugh de Lacey. In 1172, de Lacey was a formidable warrior, supposed to have once cleaved through both knight and horse with a blow from his murderous battle axe. Another mead man not not to mess with then. De Lacey allowed the native Irish to continue working his land, pragmatic and canny enough to see that his taxes could only be extracted from working farms. His settlement from Henry II, Ma Bra, or the Beautiful Plain, comprised all of present-day County Meath, along with the former important Viking colony of Fingal. Later in time, this settlement became a cornerstone of the Pale. The landscape and river De Lacey controlled has evocative townland names even today. Mount Ambrose, Skafovel, Skidoo, Warblestown, Saucerstown, Tuberbur, Kilik and Knox Sidan, all townlands of the ancient barony of Nethercross. Over time, religions and settlers came and went along the banks of the ward. The old pagan idols banished by St. Patrick for the new Christian religion coming out of Egypt. One God, 
one saviour and worryingly for the expanding native Celtic church, one pope as well. Inspired believers at this time renounced the worthless world and lived in lonely and godforsaken places. In time too, they would spread the religious insight and revelations all over Europe and beyond. Norman castles and roads too sprang up alongside the river, continental French patois mixing with the soft Irish murmur and the merciless tread of Cromwellian boots also came this way, 1649-52, to 52, destroying the last lingering remains of the old Celtic world. Catholics lost their land, banished to barren bogs in Connacht and still the river held its course, though they tragically had lost theirs forever. The Ward River has been the single most important factor in shaping the history and heritage of swords and its environment. Today it flows along as it always has, though now seen unremarked and unseen. Its hidden anonymity, the result of changing, fast-moving modern lifestyles. There are also mysteries and secrets to explore here. Mysteries that only the Ward River can explain to us. Why is the river so full of stones? Is there evidence along it of early settlement in swords? And what beliefs did these early people have? And how did goods make their way so rapidly from the coast into swords village in times past? Rivers surely make local history. Now let's explore some of it together. Having walked the length of the river from Kalik Bridge many times, I was always forcibly struck by the huge amount of stones of all shapes and sizes resting within it. Some of these indeed might have been eroded from the banks by floods, but in the main, these stones were cut, shaped and seemed transported from another source upriver. What catastrophe of weather could have caused this? The total destruction of the river's stone banking and bridges. Well, one likely contender may have been the hurricane of the night of 6th of January 1839 when winds of over 115 miles an hour hit Ireland, demolishing paths and steeples in its path. The artificially straightened and confined banks of the river within the park may have been especially vulnerable as the severe damage around the Placid Bridge up there suggests. Next time you look at the river, Why not check out all the big stones, big and small, deposited within it? What's your theory about what happened here? All the sections of the river have different stories to tell, no more so than that old section up at Killeek, a possible early church founded by St. Fiac, 415 to 560, may have predated Columbus' foundation at Swords. Also, what seems to be an ancient Druidic grove centred on an old ash tree with stonework attached, is also to be found up at Kilik. Pagan remains in Ireland traditionally suffered a cruel and total excision from history. The accidental discovery of an oddly shaped piece of wood up in the river is an interesting discovery. What can it be? It seems to have curiously knotted fibres at one end and also the basics of a crude face. An old boundary marker or old fencing pole? Any ideas on this artefact are welcome. Our final mystery about the river concerns the connection between swords and the sea. From ancient times we know this was a much closer connection than at present. Estuaries have a tendency to silt up over time, leaving once busy coastal ports high and dry inland. In 1750, Robert Molesworth writes from the high ground of Brackenstone House that From my room I can see a boat unloading a hundred tons of coal for me down at the harbour. So he could clearly see the estuary area of Lisson Hall from Brackenstown then. This recent rediscovery of a loading pier and stone entrance just where both rivers join confirms the truth of this observation. Swords Port really did exist upriver in navigable deep water, inland from the open sea, and for centuries goods were carried efficiently into the village of Swords, transport by the sea and boats being the norm then. Another mystery solved, perhaps? Rivers sustain and enrich us. 
Contact with their roots deepens us in Mother Nature and their constant motion reminds us that change is the natural order of things. The Ward River is our river, our own unique heritage and our abiding companion and inspiration. Let's restore it back to a central place in the daily lives of Fingalians. The story of the rich heritage along and within the Ward River has been closely interwoven with the lives of many generations of North Dubliners. It remains an inexhaustible treasure of heritage for our children and grandchildren to discover and enjoy. Fingal Aboo!